So, so telling them to lower their sensitivity helped improve their dribbling almost immediately? Yeah, massively, yeah. Oh, yeah. If you watch this, this is the results, and he was so grateful he sent me this video. And he went from not even being able to get past, I think it was level nine. And like, this is him now after I worked with him a little bit more on it. All right, guys, I'm here to say I was wrong. Now, many of you here that watch the videos probably came from a Rocket League settings video. And this is actually crazy. It's currently Wednesday when I'm recording this. I just got off the phone with my editor. When you were checking the analytics on my channel, and you wouldn't believe this, 25,000 psych, that's the wrong number, people that are subscribed to my channel came from that video. Literally one sixth of my entire audience, at least at the time I'm uploading this right now, came from one video. It's absolutely nuts. And so the reason I'm making this video today is because I recently had a really, really good coaching session with a top 100 SSL 1v1 player, uh, goes by the name of King Ranny. And he told me some stuff that made me realize what I actually said in that video with now over a million views was at least in part wrong. So today I'm gonna be outlining the setting that we talked about and how you should actually be doing the opposite of what I said back in that video like a year ago. Okay, but with that out of the way, let's talk about the video and get into the setting I wanna talk about today, which is controller sensitivity. Now, here's the thing. For the past, like, it's almost 14, 21 days at this point, I went through a little experiment where I increased my steering sensitivity and my aerial sensitivity significantly. Now, for those of you who don't know, what steering and aerial sensitivity does in Rocket League is it's equivalent to, you know, your, your mouse sensitivity, let's say, in a shooter game. So for example, if your controller sensitivity is at the lowest setting of just 1.0, a small movement in your joystick will only result in a small movement in your car. Whereas even going up to like 2.0, which I mean, you can slide it all the way up to 10 in Rocket League, but even going up to like 2.0, then a small movement in your joystick would result in actually a big movement in your car. And that's why this is controversial, because if you look at, like, for example, Liquipedia, and you see all the pros controller sensitivities and aerial sensitivities listed out in order, you're going to find sensitivities that fall anywhere between, you know, one on the low end, all the way up to two and 2.5. Nobody really goes past that. But the point is, in my million view settings video, I told people to go as high as they could when it comes to sensitivity. And after my coaching session with Ranny, I actually think that is totally wrong. And so I was on call with all the coaches from my coaching program, and I'll actually just show you the moment here because this is when I realized I was wrong. <laughs> and I'm like, so drop it to one, so your movement is what you expect it to be. They went, yeah. oh, and like I say, two or three of them now have, uh, hang on, I'll show you. Oh yeah. If you watch this, this is the results. And he was so grateful he sent me this video and he went from not even being able to get past, I think it was level nine. And like, this is him now after I worked with him a little bit more on it. Um, if you watch this, yeah, wow. but watch how cleanly he does it. Yeah. yeah. And That's he was really so cool. chuffed. He sent me that and he's like, seriously, it's so it definitely works. I mean, that's what I did now. Whether it's coincidence or whether it's part of it, I did that and then within the two, three weeks went to champ, so. Wow. And see, so that's something that I've, I've always heard from you, Ranny, right? It's like a lot of people just go, like in my old video, I recommended that people use 1.8 because I was like, I like 1.8, mm. but I have 2K, 3K hours, so. Yeah, it's probably fine for you then, but for new people, that could kind of be a bad influence. Randy was like, the first thing you have to do, just like with any mechanic, is you have to build up from you know the ground. You gotta start from the ground up. And so what he said was, hey, if you wanna learn this faster, you have to learn how to make the micro movements first. And so he said, starting with a lower sensitivity, if you're just picking up the game, if you're in the lower ranks and working your way up is the best way to go. So he said he's actually now sitting at, uh, he just experimented with going up to 2.0 uh, steering and aerial sensitivity. So we're now at the exact same point 
um, in our sensitivity, but he said, as he's been climbing through the ranks, as he promotes, he steadily increases that sensitivity. And as he gets more confident with his mechanics, he steadily increases that sensitivity. And I was like, aha. And so really the purpose of the video is to say this, you know, if you're watching right now and you're experimenting with your controller settings, maybe think about where your mechanics are at, you know, what level you're at watching right now, and think about scaling your controller sensitivity and your aerial sensitivity accordingly. So higher rank you are, maybe the higher sensitivity you go, the lower rank you are, the earlier you're starting out, go a lower sensitivity. And really focus on getting those micro movements down, making sure you have the control and the consistency before you scale up and try to do the fancier thing. Cause I think that that's how it all came full circle to me. And that's what kind of flipped the switch and made me realize, okay, you know, Randy's onto something. Shout out him for giving me an idea for this video. And I hope this was as eye-opening for you as it was for me when I first started. As always, my name's Luke. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next video. Peace guys.